I started simply because I felt that there was a need to stand up for the right things. No one is doing it. I am going to do it. And I'm young. I'm a girl. I don't care how you look at me. I'll be the first to stand up for what I believe in. You are at your gym right now, right? You are literally <laughs> in front of your front desk. I know you for so long. I've seen you done so many things. Maybe just share with us a little bit how you started this. For those who followed me, you know that my first job when I was 14 years old was a clown. I had low self-esteem. So then I gained my confidence from doing that job because I had a mask on and I was doing that for four years. That built my character to be more daring in being out in the open, in public. I went on to becoming a cheerleader first and then from cheerleading, I went into dancing. How I came into all this thing is definitely at that age was following my passion. My mom used to call me like jack of all trades, master of none because I used to play all kinds of sports. I would play bowling, softball, football, basketball because I was trying to find out what am I good at because all I wanted to do was to be able to represent my school. That was my mindset at that time and obviously that didn't happen because I wasn't the most athletic guy. Eventually, I went into dancing and then from dancing, I was noticed. That's where my career started to pick up. Then I started doing my video was my vlogs because I was watching YouTube a lot at that time for research purposes and I thought a lot of people don't know that dancers actually has a voice. One, two years after that, I sort of got more known and after YouTube, I've always wanted to be a TV host. I guess what really made me do all these things was I told myself this one thing where if there are opportunities that's coming my way, they'll say there are a lot of doors that will be opening for you. You just need to walk through one door. But my thinking is if there are 10 doors open for me, I will walk through the first door, walk out, walk in the second door, walk out, walk in the third door, I will walk into every single door because I believe that we are more than what we think we are. And if I can do more things, that means I'm sort of challenging myself every single day. So whenever somebody said, Dennis, can you do this? For me, it's if I can, I will. If I have the time, I am going to do that. If I don't have the time, I will find time and I will still do it. So it was more of that motivation to just keep challenging myself and to see how good can I be. People always expect a formula to like, wow, how can I be like Dennis? Here? But the truth is he literally just went head on. People don't hear hear that enough, people always think that, wow, you know, you're oh. Dennisin ma, right? Yeah. You're Dennisin what? Okay. Of course you can so, open the gym lah, right? A lot of people would think that I have other people backing me up and all this kind of thing. I do not. I only have my mom, my dad and my wife that's really having my back right now to take care of the gym when I cannot be here. But most of the time, I'm here right now lah. It's definitely a huge commitment, especially in times like that. So you have so many things that you obviously can do and you are known about. Do you really follow what you are passionate about or do you follow your heart. We always see that other people are working harder than us. Like for me, I feel that you, Adele, you're one of my inspiration because you work super hard. And you know how people's perception, I are girls, are girls. Are. I see that you're like crazy, you know, and it inspires me because if she's that crazy, I gotta be crazy too. You are, you, know? you are. <laughs> So there's this one year when I was opening my gym. In that two and a half months, I had five big projects. I never thought I could survive that. Like honestly, I thought I was gonna die somewhere. Like what they all say, you have to remember why you did it in the first place. Why did you choose to do what you do then? It's because you wanted to challenge yourself. Now the challenge is there. Are you gonna accept this challenge or are you gonna say, you know what, I'm too scared of this, maybe next time. For me it was, I accepted all the jobs knowing that it's gonna be close to one another. It was the craziest three months of my life. I remember December 30th, was the last day of my shoot. At the end of that day, I drove back, I cried. I told myself like, Dennis, you just went through the three months that you feared the most. You went through that and you survived. That means you can do much, much more. When you want to challenge yourself, you go all the way. Like what you keep repeating, you know, you knew it was insane. You knew it was very, very tiring and stressful, but you never gave up. You kept going. There is this saying that say, if there is a will, there is a way. It's not just saying for fun lah. Because of what people see, one yes. dimensional. People just see, wow, you're having fun. People don't hear enough of the times where we look at our p &L, the times where we <laughs> really have to probably knock our heads in the wall to like, oh my God, I don't know how to make the correct decision because sometimes yes. there really isn't the correct decision. There is only the decision that you choose. A lot of people ask me like, how can I be like you, Dennis? How can I pursue my passion? I'm very tired of working nine to five, sitting in the office, doing paper work, blah, 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 this and that. I said, look, first and foremost, you're only suffering for the past four or five years. While you are suffering, you were getting paid. Those people would tell me I'm getting a pretty good income. It's just that it's not my passion. I hate it. It's very simple. You need to work to build a foundation, a base for you to be able to pursue what you want. Your mindset should be focused on the end goal, not about, oh, but I want to do my passion now while working on what will give you the money in order to sustain your life in the next two years when you got no job and you're trying to pursue your passion. 
connection. And the thing is, compared to our time, Adele, uh-huh. we don't necessarily have the connection or the reach to the right people or the right mentor to teach us what yeah. we should know to save us the years that we have spent learning what we are doing. There wasn't people that does what we do. We are the first right. generation. What Dennis just mentioned, you know, be progressive, be innovative, and most importantly, I think be patient is one thing that I want to add. You know, with internet, social media, and whatnot, things are very accessible, but things that come fast won't last. I'm also very curious. What is your personal mantra? Actually, there was one period in my life, I was actually at the peak of my career, my dance career, but there was a situation where I was sort of put into a very dark place and I came up with this tattoo. My first tattoo is saying, live, love, life, because at that moment, I lost a lot of close friends and a lot of people that I trusted. At the end of the day, what matters and what's most important is that I live the life that I love. You only can do so much, so it's better to focus on what you want instead of what others want from you. Or even okay. worse, what you want to prove others wrong. On that note, right, a lot of times when people ask me for advice, I will always say, you need to start with the right mindset, with the right intention. I never thought I wanted to be famous or to be yeah. seen or to be heard. What I do is that I just focus on always becoming better. A lot of young girls, they always say, wow, Adele, how did you first start your business? And you know what's funny? When I first started also, I didn't actually say, oh, I want to make one million. No, I, I really didn't. I started simply because I felt that there was a need to stand up for the right things. No one is doing it. I am going to do it. And I'm young. I'm a girl. I don't care how you look at me. I'll be the first to stand up for what I believe in. Don't get us wrong. I'm not saying that you don't need to set goals. But what I'm saying is the true purpose, core reason when you want to start, you cannot just put it on because I want to get 200 people to like me. That is not powerful enough. The road is not just very tough. The road is very, very long. We are young. We had a lot of time to fail, to learn. We don't have to win at the start because if yes. you learn how to persevere, that's how you will be able to survive through the time. I think you have to celebrate failure, be willing to fail, and most importantly, persevere. One thing that a lot of people are not doing enough is being honest with themselves. Put some sort of persona on the front. They are afraid to show the vulnerability of themselves. At this point, I would always go out there and talk to people and say how suffering I am, all the business failures wow. and all the ventures that I went through. And I'm very honest with my experience because I want someone out there, I want you to know it is yeah. not easy. It is not glamorous. It yeah. is something that you're going to work very, very hard, very, very tiring and you might hate yourself but I also know that eventually I'm going to get out of this suffering and eventually evolve and do greater things. This failure does not mean the end of me. People would think that you know Adele, Dennis, all of us, we are 110% everyday motivated and always rushing. Oh, no. no guys, we are human too. We yeah. break down to, we cry to. Experience is the best teacher. Experience in terms of traveling, going to different cultures, studying different things, learning different things, meeting different people. All these things will build you to become the person that you are going to be. Do what your future will thank you. Really. Yes. We have to envision, you know, what would the five years later Adele thank me today? What would the five years later Dennis tell you, thank you Dennis for doing this at 2020? So a lot of people are very envious and like, oh Dennis, you get a lot of free stuff, right? And, <laughs> and when I was 16 years old, I could not afford my own Adidas originals. I need to work hard enough and hopefully someday Adidas will see me. I didn't even think of a sponsor or ambassador. I was just thinking of work with me. That was when I was 16 years old, guys. I'm 32 this year and Adidas has signed a contract for me and I've been working with them for the past 3-4 years. It's not really what you see, it's really what I have done. It is a proud moment, you know, and like you said, Danny's 16 years old is well, very, very, very yeah. proud of Danny's right now. Like, I would always sometimes sit down and say, you know what, Dennis, you've done well. Yeah. Bye, bro. <laughs> bye Okay, okay. With, with that, we will end the session here today. I mean, thank you so much, Dennis, for your time. Thank you for sharing so openly. Bye. Bye-bye.